Welcome, welcome everyone to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and today we're going to be looking at a fun explorer deck. Uh, we're going to be playing around with Mysterium Orb, which is a card that I really, really like. Uh, it is a ramp card that only focuses on explorer tribal. It offers extremely powerful ramp for a very significant drawback, which is that if you don't have any explorers, it doesn't do anything. However, it does give your sentinels endurance and overwhelm, so if you have some decent sentinels in the deck, you can certainly get a lot done. Uh, what we are doing is we are using this card to play out basically a really, really high-end, uh, very, very high-power list of Praxis stuff, including Heart of the Vault, the standard Great Kiln Titan, and uh, Caleb Uncrowned Prince, all of which are cards that can just really rock the boat and do amazing things uh, by themselves or together. So, yeah, what we are basically doing here is we are trying to push those cards out with a large variety of other cards that really like focus on those threats. And by just throwing a lot of uh, really aggressive explorers out early, we can push on our opponent, we can make them kind of have to react to us in a pretty bad way, and we can slowly get them down to a decent amount of health, and then we can use the big guys to sort of finish off the, the game and basically just get everything uh, done uh, on that side. So let's talk a little bit about the deck. This is a this is the most straightforward version of the list. There's another version of the list with Invoke the Waystones, which is delightful and really fun, and we will talk about that one maybe in a, even a separate video, although I'll also show it at the end of this one. Um, what we are doing here is we have straight up explorers, so uh, cards like Oni Cave Diver, Sauropod Wrangler, Trailmaker, Waker of Ancients, and Amber Acolyte. And you'll notice that all of these explorers are doing a very specific thing. They're little two power attackers that do in some way make it easier to cast your Caleb's, Great Kiln Titans, Heart, and Heart of the Vaults. So Sauropod Wrangler makes them cheaper. Trailmaker makes uh, you have more power. Amber Accolade allows you to get more consistent power so that you're more likely to cast power every turn, which is very important for the deck. We tried going without these for a while, but they were just too good, so uh, absolutely ended up running uh, several of them. And then finally, Waker of Ancients allows us to play cards like Heart of the Vault, Great Kiln Titan, and Caleb off the top of our deck, which ends up being very, very useful uh, overall. Cave Diver is the one card out. It is a red explorer, which is important. We want red cards here specifically for Caleb to activate. It also has a really good bonus when you have a relic, which we will have quite a few relics in here. And it has that scout ability, which does allow you to search for the cards that you're, you really need, specifically your really, really big stuff. Okay, and all of that really, really helps out. We also have Initiative Sands, which is not an explorer, but allows us to ramp up and get to our three drops a little bit faster, play basically a little bit more consistently, and just have a little bit more ramp in the deck, as well as just be kind of a little aggressive dude on board that we can sometimes walk with. Deciding when to block and when not to is pretty important in this deck. Most of the time, you generally want to leave all of your units on board. Eventually, you get the ability to sacrifice a lot of your time-based units, but you want to keep your red guys out because Caleb is such a really good finisher with those cards, so that tends to help out a bit. Okay, the big center piece of the deck is Mysterium Orb. With that plus one maximum power for each other explorer, Mysterium Orb will ramp you very, very quickly from turn three to turn six. Like, you can usually play a Heart of the Vault after you play a Mysterium Orb, or after you have played uh, a couple of other cards. And one of the things that this deck does really well is play Heart of the Vault on four from a variety of different sources. You can go something like Initiative Sands into Sauropod Wrangler, and like basically just set up like a, a bunch of stuff that way, you can do like all sorts of interesting things, sort of ramp yourself up and make Heart of the Vault go down to five. And then on four, you play your power and uh, you play like a little bit of extra something or you play your power and you just play Heart of the Vault. And it's really, really delightful times if you can get all of the fixing necessary through Trailmaker, who's a card that's very, very good at getting Heart of the Vault out of the door. Okay, so Mysterium Orb gets you the huge ramp, and that means that we basically just jump straight from four to six. We don't do a lot in the middle. Uh, most of our four drops are pretty, pretty light. We keep one Diogo Malaga, who is an explorer, and also gives double damage and charge to everything in our deck, which is really useful for both making our explorers more relevant late game, but also for making our big stuff absolutely insane. So he's a pretty fun card. Uh, he's mostly a fun of in the deck, but he does serve a purpose. If you want to replace this card, you can replace them with Groundbreakers, and uh, I think the Groundbreakers are a perfectly good substitution for most of the cards in the deck if you're trying to go for a more aggressive strategy. You can also run Sandstorm Titans as well, you know, the standard stuff. If you don't have the Legendaries, basically just go uh, a little bit lower down, cut some of the Mysterium Orbs for Power Stones, and then like try to ramp into this sort of Heart of the Vault type stuff, but uh, you don't have to run the Great Kiln Titans and the other things if you're looking for the budget version of this deck. Okay, 
So Diogo gives us a little bit of a fixing there, and then Ancient Defenses allows us to add essentially what is a 5th and 6th Torch to our deck, and also makes it so that all of our Sentinels are just a little bit bigger, which is pretty important because A, the Sentinels are getting Overwhelm off of Mysterium Orb, which is actually really relevant. Uh, it is very important that these guys both have Endurance and dodge all of that blue, but also that they have that huge amount of extra damage from Ancient Defenses and Overwhelm and can really push through off of a Caleb and get that like final bit of reach that you really Really need in the deck. So Mysterium Orb's doing that and Ancient Defenses is helping out with that strategy by making it so you can play a Sentinel and get plus two strength. You can also use the other relic, the three cost relic that uh, returns a card and gives your explorers bonuses when you play a Sentinel. Both of them are pretty good. We don't have a lot of Sentinels in this version of the deck so it's totally fine to use either one. Okay, beyond that, our basic plan here is Great Kiln Titan. Great Kiln Titan plays relics and deals damage equal to their cost to an enemy. At the end of your turn, you get to play the top card of your deck. Both of these things are really good. The thing that I see very often is Great Kiln Titan into Caleb or Heart of the Vault, and that's really fun. We have a lot of scry abilities, so we can focus what the top card of our deck is quite a bit, and that's really good. And then also, if Great Kiln Titan plays like an Ancient Defenses or a Mysterium Orb, he gets to burn something off of the board and actually help out on board as well. Uh, he's always just a huge impact on board, always a forced harsh roll or die. He's got so much offense that he's just really, really good, so it's well worth it to play him, and he's just a very, very solid hit off of Mysterium Orb. Caleb, on the other hand, is the game ender. He's the guy who actually gets things done. Uh, he plays charge... He plays weapons on all of your units, Cave Diver, Waker of Ancients. He plays them on the Grenadin off of Granite Waystone. He plays them on Great Kiln and Heart of the Vault and Diogo Malaga. And all of that really means that he just gets to basically just add a huge buff to your board and overwhelm even some of the trickiest of defensive lines. I think he's really, really solid in this deck. Uh, he tends to give it a lot of extra push, and that is really, really relevant for basically just making sure that you have a finisher for the game. All right, so... That's pretty much it. The power base is Seats, Praxis, uh, Banners, Crests of Impulse, Full Waystones, and Fire and Time Sigils. We're not using a lot of Seeking, we're using Amber Acolyte to fix most of what we need to fix. And beyond that, we're basically just making sure that we set everything up with these cards so that we always have enough influence for Heart of the Vault and can play that card as early as humanly possible, usually turn 4 or 5. Um, beyond that, we just basically try to value out our opponents. If they fight our explorers, then they have less removal later for our big stuff like Great Kiln Titan. So we kind of want that to happen, but ideally if we can just be completely unimpeded and rampage through, that's always the best route. So that's the basic strategy. All right, so with that, we're going to get this uh, whole show on the road. Let's play a couple of games and I'll show you how it works. Here we are in round one against Mr. Mucky Muck. I have a Trailmaker, a Sauropod Wrangler, an Amber Waystone, and a Fire Sigil. I don't love two power hands in this deck too much. It does have two explorers, which kind of tempts me. Uh, I'm not seeing any seats or banners though, which means that influence is gonna be a little rough. So even though I get to Heart of the Belt early, I'm not gonna get an amazing curve. The plan here is not as strong as it could be, so we'll redraw. All right, if I had some crests for scouting, something that would actually like sort of smooth out the draws and make sure that I get the exact cards that I need in order, that would be a much more likely hand. But as it stands, yeah, we're just going to be sitting tight and doing what we can. Okay, here I'm going to Crest of Impulse first to try and find some more power. I really like this opening hand. Mysterium Orb is a pretty playable card. Uh, we don't get to do a lot with it immediately, but it does mean a lot of ramp for the big stuff, so I think we'll go ahead and pick that up. Now, Amber Waystone plays Trailmaker on time, which I then get to use to play Mysterium Orb, even if the Seed of Impulse is depleted. So that seems like a pretty good start to the game, and it also means I don't have to go too heavy on board against a potential Harsh Rule or anything super crazy there. Uh, as far as influence goes, we want three fire, three time. So we'll go ahead and put a little fire in there with Trailmaker and get started. We see the time sigil there. Amber Waystone here is a really, really good pickup, and if I want to, I can now double up on Explorers. Another Trailmaker plus another Waker of Ancients would allow me to play any six drops I had on the top of my deck, but most of the cards that I want to warp actually have eight costs, so we'll probably just Seed of Impulse here, throw the Mysterium Orb down, and attack for two. All right, so now I'm already at five power. If I see a Heart of the Vault on the top of my deck, I can play it this turn. That's turn four, which uh, sure ain't bad. 
Uh, if we don't see Heart of the Vault, that's probably fine. This looks like Echo Mokto, so it's gonna have a decent amount of like hard removal slash harsh rules type stuff. That's something that we're gonna have to pay a lot of attention to, but for the most part, we're gonna get things done. All right, Cave Diver gets to scout. Ancient Defenses seems perfectly playable here. I don't mind it, but I also kind of want to, like, because I've got so much ramp here and my opponent's not on harsh roll yet, I think I'm going to throw that away. And we're going to play Trailmaker this again. Do the trick. So that we can ramp to 8. Oh, I was going to play Waker of Ancients. That was my mistake. Okay. So, yeah, we made a slight error here. Um, as it stands, I actually wanted to play Waker of Ancients so that I could get the 8-drop uh, off the top of my deck as opposed to Trailmaker. So we see a Slay there, or Cave Diver dies, I guess. That's fine. Praxis Banner's fine. We're going to play Waker of Ancients here. We shape the future. I don't see the power I need, so it's just attack for four here. Our opponent's a little bit stuck, which is good, because the Explorers can certainly beat down any time that our opponent is not in good shape. So end our turn here. I can get Caleb off the top of my deck now, and I think we're going to be pretty happy with that result. It's all right, that's uh, three damage to face. I think I want to save the torches for Stone Powder Alchemist, so we'll just let that live. And I've got plenty of stuff going on here, so we're looking good on that front. Granite Waystone is another unit. We're still not seeing Harsh Rule, so I think we just push here. And we're not seeing our big stuff yet, so... Definitely want to go as hard as possible, as fast as we can. Throw that Granite in out. I've got 12 power, so I'm well capable of actually pushing something out here. What have we got, Mr. Mucky Muck? Avara's Favor knocks 3 power off the top. <laughs> We're looking at Flame Blast in this deck. It's certainly a possibility. Uh, there's also like some other things we can do, like Lava Blood Goliath. But this looks pretty good. I have two red units right now, so Caleb gets to charge off the top. And excitement happens. We get a... Aerialist Kopesh, a Hidden Shiv, and a Headsman's Axe. Not too terrible. If I Torch, I can do a little bit more damage. <laughs> I can play my Sauropod Wrangler and Torch if I need lethal. Let me check. 8, 12, probably just Torch his face, though. That's probably better. 16, yeah, that's, that's more than enough. Annihilate kills Caleb. Yep, that's a bit of an issue. But we still get a huge ramp bonus here. Now I have to decide if I want to play Sauropod Wrangler. I think the answer is no. Sauropod Wrangler gets me some refreshments if I get harsh ruled here. And Piercing Grief is not too big a threat here. So we're totally fine on that front. Caleb's done his job. He's pushed us across. So even with the Devour to pull a little bit more life gain out, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plus Torch is 12, so that'll be lethal. And the Piercing Grief that he plays off of the Devour doesn't do anything for him, so... Now he can harsh roll, but we are already in his business. We'll swing on in. And there we go. Torch for the win. Not too bad. Pono was a little bit stuck there, so we'll play a couple more games and see if we can find uh, something a bit more satisfying. Alright, so we got Seed of Impulse, Time Sigil, Oni Cave Diver. As an opener, this hand is pretty weak. Uh, two power on one is not always all that good, and we don't really have any sort of ramping, so I think we want to go ahead and cut it out. Uh, Mysterium Orb is kind of nice, but only if I can actually get the three powers, so here is a much better hand. We get the Praxis Banner to start, and we can play Sauropod Wrangler to start getting our ramp out, or we can play Waker of Ancients early to draw more removal. And I kind of like Waker first because that gives us a little bit more time. It's not like I have a 5 drop at 4, so it's easier to just sort of draw removal for w with Waker and not really let my opponent know what I'm up to just yet. Praxis Banner and Seat. Uh, let's play... There's a case for not playing anything to keep the Waystones active, but that seems really, really lame. We should definitely play the uh, Waker. And that'll give us some information about our deck that we can play around with. We know we have a Caleb on top, so that'll give us a little bit of decision-making power. And then Sauropod Wrangler we know is going to help out with the Heart of the Vault, so it should be good. Play the Seed of Impulse here. Attack for one, put a little pressure on. And now we're looking at Heart of the Vault on turn four, turn five. If I can, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be able to play it on turn four, sadly, but uh, with Praxis Banner and Granite Waystone, it will be a pretty clear turn five. 
Okay, Sauropod so Wrangler number two would allow us to play Caleb a little bit earlier. But this deck clearly has harsh rules, so I'm kind of loath to do that since Heart of the Vault's going to trigger the harsh rule. So if he plays out a power four here, then we made the right decision. If he's stuck, then we didn't. Crest of Wisdom, yeah, I think he'll probably find power four and then heal harsh roll. So getting that first initial bit of damage with Heart of the Vault and all of our good stuff and then playing the other guys to just really sort of womp into him will be the best route. Okay, we warp off the top here. <laughs> get ourselves yet another Heart of the Vault. Love it. Okay, so we just went in on straight Heart of the Vault value here. Not really a lot to say about that. Uh, we will get to play the cheap one if we need to, to draw power. So that's really good. This ends now. It's basically just going to be gas, gas, gas here. Okay, I can play the expensive one or the cheap one here. I'm kind of in, on the expensive one, I would say. That seems like the most appropriate route. Although I could, there is a case for the cheap one with the Grenadin. I think that we will probably see some removal this round. So another Harsh Rule or another Vanquish. And then we should play the cheap one and the Grenadin next turn along with a Trailmaker or something to get Caleb available. All right, what you got, Yusko? Time heals all. A Lumen Defender. Okay, well, that's something. Let's try Diogo plus a Crest of Impulse. Pony Cave Diver is a pretty cool card, but I don't need it right now. We'll just play a Sauropod Wrangler or a Trailmaker. Trailmaker because I need the 8th power. The we're going to try to force him to actually throw a Harsh Rule or something along those lines. Do I want to attack for 6 here? Uh, it's not the most awful idea in the world. I basically just lose to the Lumen Defender, which I don't love. But yeah, sure, let's do it. Certainly it would be nice if we could find an Orb of Mysterium first so that we could get the Overwhelm through, but I think I just want to sort of knock this out in case of like a Chalice draw or something crazy along those lines. We're not going to be able to deal with that in any timely curve. That's quite enough. Okay, cool. So now it's Crest of Impulse. Talir's Intervention looks great and will allow us to bounce Heart of the Vault back, uh, although I'm probably going to play Heart of the Vault this turn. So let's go for full attack in. You can block if you want to. I will certainly just uh, ping off that curator. Okay. There we go. Dead and gone. And let's play the Granite in since we've got Talir's Intervention to save the Heart of the Vault from a Harsh Roll. Talir's Intervention. Uh, I think that was a card that I... Yeah, this is a really, really solid card here. Just like the flexibility of this card is too good. And being able to bounce in particular Heart of the Vaults is just very, very strong. The life gain helps against aggro. The silence helps Time against uh, Tavrod decks. So you can really get a lot done with it. Um, and I'm kind of thinking about doing that now, in fact. Yeah, let's do it. I've got three red cards, so we're going to silence that and we're going to Caleb in. Let's go. Rebels are aiming high. Looks like a pretty good hit. We got a 3-3 weapon here, Vodican's Staff. I'll get that back. Hammer of Might offers three war cries. The Bronze Crest draws me a card, which is fine. And Tower Shield gets me a little bit of armor. Also fine. Not particularly important for the aggro aspect, but it's enough that we are going to force yet another Harsh Rule if he's got it, which he doesn't appear to. I assume he blocks the 9-9 here, unless he's looking to die a horrible death. All right, we'll see if he's got the harsh rule here. If he does, Caleb kills him, so. Should be fine either way. Yusko sitting here thinking. He's running a Chalice control deck. The idea here is to play Crim uh, Crystal and Chalice and just basically buff up his low health units or his low attack units to draw cards. And you can get a pretty much infinite draw engine going, but it's very slow to get going which is why we're really glad that our Praxis deck has pressure. Uh, adding some pressure to the mid-range really means that you have a much better chance of winning these control matchups because you can just continue to catch them and force them to actually play reactionary. And if they aren't reacting efficiently, then you really get it uh, just all wrapped up quite nicely. 
Okay, Yusko has one blocker here. If he plays another, he might think that he'll be able to live, but I'm pretty sure the cable will secure that. So we'll see if there's a harsh rule here, and if there isn't, uh, if there's actually just a blocker. I really hope he doesn't concede, because I want to see that second Caleb. All right, second Caleb, let's go. Yeah! Rebels are aiming high. Let's not let them down. Not bad. Got some flying. Got some uh, Trickster's Cloak. Unblockability. That looks like the concede. And Lawman's Sidearm gets us some Justice Sigils. Not that we have any of those. <laughs> Alright, so that was an exciting time. I'm going to make one addition to this deck based on what I've seen uh, in the last couple of games, which is that we're pulling a couple, a few too few um, cards of the, like, sort of the threats that we want to play. I'm going to add Lava Blood Goliaths to this deck, and we're going to cut like a couple of the Wakers so that we can get those Lava Blood Goliaths out. Because while the Wakers get us to our threats a little bit faster, and they're really good cards for Caleb, I really like the idea of Lava Blood Goliath with Ancient Defenses, and I'm pretty excited about sort of uh, burning people out for sort of a last like fun game. So we'll see if we can get that going. Uh, if we can't, that's okay. We still got uh, plenty of good games in with Caleb, so we'll do that. All right, here we go are up against Pobzi, a handful of 8 drops with an Amber Accolade in there to fix. Crest kind of makes me want to keep this, like the influence is actually pretty good and Amber Accolade fixes enough that we can actually play Heart of the Vault, and playing Heart of the Vault is generally just sort of the way to sort of sweep into the rest of your deck. If you can warp Heart of the Vault off top, you're feeling pretty happy about life, or if you can draw it off of a Crest, you know, that's all good. Uh, this is a first hand, so I'm not super keen on it, but I think, I think we have a good chance to draw some 2 drops, so... We have a better chance of drawing two drops than drawing bombs, but keeping a hand with three bombs does feel pretty tricky. Sauropod Wrangler is that Sauropod, so we'll go ahead and play that and see what we can get. Ha! Sorry, my deck is fairly sabotage-proof. We do have four torches that can get hit, and we have the, uh, the Sentinel booster, <laughs> which I've forgotten the name of despite, I think, accurately naming it previously. Mysterium Orb is the other card that actually can get hit, and that does hurt if we get hit, but... I think here it's probably just play Amber Acolyte. My opponent's not going to sabotage me this early, so... Play that, and end my turn. I could be wrong, maybe my opponent's going to throw another sabotage because he doesn't have anything else to do, but... Alright, there we go, Mysterium Orb. Heart of the Vault costs 5, so we can play that very quickly. Talir's Intervention defends our Sauropod, and we've got a ton of ramp. So, yeah, we're looking really good here. Heart of the Vault will actually be something that I can bounce back with Talir's Intervention. Okay, now the question is, do I want to return this, or do I want to just let it die? Um, I kind of want to return it. It doesn't allow us to play Heart of the Vault back twice. <sighs> Probably it can just die. We're, we're fine with that. Like, it doesn't really mean anything to play it again, because we get Heart of the Vault off the draw. I guess I need to draw a power, so this might have been wrong. I could Talir's Intervention to play another power, and that would get me to a clean six easy. Talir's Intervention for a power. Is that worth it? To play Heart of the Vault next turn? I think it's worth it. And this is just, you know, flexibility of Talir's Intervention. You can use it to do a lot of things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. We could have used it to save the two drop, but I think I actually prefer to have more power here. Either way, we wouldn't have been able to play Heart of the Vault this turn. And now we're a little less reliant on our explorers to get things going. Shadow Sigil there. Strategize. Okay. So we are gonna get our Heart of the Vault this turn. That's really good to know. We're up against Film Control, so we have to worry about, like, sort of just big stuff. Anything on that kind of scary end. Cheap Diogo seems really solid if I can get enough explorers down. I would really like to be able to just Diogo and immediately activate against Film, but I'm probably not gonna get that lucky. Can't be permafrosted on the Heart of the Vault, so it has to be killed by Feeding Time or Death Strike. Looks like today it's Death Strike. And with a another Heart of the Vault right there, I think I'm going to play that. Follow it up with a Praxis Banner and an Initiate. Time quickens. And now I can play 8 drops without any issues. So, looking very strong against Feln right now. Single target removal will get you there, but with the explorers pecking in, and the fact that you have a single target to deal with every turn, this is going to get pretty rough pretty fast. We're still kind of on the side of leaving Diogo for a little bit. 
Uh, Lightning Storm would suck for us here because we wouldn't be able to play Caleb or Great Kiln Titan next turn. Um, I think actually we might even still be able to. No. Okay, yeah, Black Sky Harbinger hurts. It's a pretty good card in this situation because we just don't get to do anything cool. Crest of Impulse seems right. And Trailmaker is a pretty dang good card that happens to be an explorer, but I think I'm mostly onto big threats at this point. Let's attack for six, and then we'll play Diogo. And threaten to activate him. He might actually draw a removal spell. That would be great, because he's currently not doing a lot. Yep, extract on Diogo into possibly another extract. Yeah, okay. So we got a lot of removal out just for Diogo, even though I wasn't going to be able to activate him this turn. Oh, man, I guess I did get to activate him this turn. How about that? All right, we'll attack for six here. Caleb might have offered lethal, but I think Great Kiln Titan feels a little bit better here. And what are you going to play, Great Kiln? Power? Don't mind a power. Annihilate kills Great Kiln, so it looks like Caleb would, in fact, have been uh, defeated. But I think we're just looking pretty solid here. The last card is an Annihilate, then this gets a little bit tricky, but it's not that tricky. Caleb first. We got our Overwhelm Heart of the Vault. 7-6, unfortunately. Not the best stat, Lelio, but Rock Carapace on Caleb. I love it. Let's go. Here's an exact 15. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to block there. That's, that's my thought. All right, Caleb getting heavy with it. Play the Amber Waystone. That'll help us stabilize a little bit against this Black Sky Harbinger. New buffs on Black Sky Harbinger. He's a tougher guy for Praxis to deal with because he heals so much more damage. Uh, Caleb does not get to attack here, so we might not actually be able to win. Let's see here. We could silence the Black Sky. Nah, we'll, we'll just Caleb here. Rebels are aiming high. Oh, gosh. Did I get Endurance? I got Endurance on the other Caleb. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Uh, we added some Lava Bloods at the end of that round, but I think we'll just leave the list where it's at because we never needed them. Uh, that was some good rounds. Okay, so that was fun stuff. Uh, <laughs> let's do the postmortem. All right, in the interest of showing my last changes, which were just some little tweaks that we made while recording, uh, I upped the Ancient Defenses, took the Waker of Ancients and the Amber Acolytes down a little bit, and now the deck is, like, I still like these Amber Acolytes for fixing, but I don't like Waker of Ancients in that large of numbers. I do think it's important to have red cards for Caleb, but most of the time Caleb's doing things off of, like, other big stuff. So that allows us to up the Ancient Defenses by, I think, one, and we added in two Lava Blood Goliaths at the very, very top. That gives us a couple more things to do with large, large, threats and we're very capable as you have seen of playing anything at pretty much any cost we often had like 14 to 15 power there so that's not a big problem uh lava wood goliath does work somewhat with ancient defenses i'm not sure if it actually gets that plus two bonus uh when it's played before the summon i'm pretty sure that's how it works but i i didn't verify it uh in the games that we tested so uh, but i think it should work out fine either way i would play lava blood goliath as a blank six six just because it is so good at just knocking out out your opponent's threats and dealing direct damage to your opponent's face so that's a pretty solid option there let's look at the other deck as well this is the initial plan for the this was the initial plan and i really liked it it was a really good slow value deck but i wasn't really getting the kind of like results that i wanted in terms of pressure so we switched to a caleb strategy um, and this one is all about invoking the waystones which happens to be a delightful amount of fun so with mysterium orb and secret pages and amber acolyte and a bunch of all of that stuff we get to play invoke the waystones very very frequently and that means that we get to basically just play an endless supply of our really really big drops of which we have as usual quite a lot claw of the first dragon happens to trigger very well off great kiln titan and solve the go wide problem which is to say that praxis tends to have issues with uh, decks that go wide and then we also have uh, Mystic Ascendant to draw cards, World Bearer Behemoth to sort of fix power in other ways, and we have Emerging Colossus to make Invoke the Waystones cost zero and do all sorts of shenanigans. We're going to do another brew on this one, I think, so we'll talk about it more later. But uh, for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like or subscribe if you want to see more brews videos and other awesome content. Uh, I think we're reaching 5,000 subscribers, and when that happens, we're going to release Eternal Basics number one again <laughs> which was i think one of our first videos actually uh but we have been we've been working on the redo of it for a while and i i have a deck now that works in um 
dusk road that I'm pretty happy with. So we're going to start to start the basic series up again, and that should be either this week or next week. Uh, I, we will probably hit 5,000 about that time, and uh, I will. I have to do a little bit more work on the video and then get it out, but should be out pretty soon. So that's it. That's all the news. Thank you guys for watching. Have a really good night, and enjoy your games of Eternal. Cheers.